This is a piece I've just poured for a local artist. His name is Dimitri, and he's a pretty talented artist. Um, he does figurative work, fairly traditional figurative work. Um, he's good. But when it comes to patinas, he's not traditional. He always wants weird, outlandish, crazy colors. And his latest, for this one, he sent me this picture. Looks rust colored. And asked if I can do it. And of course I said probably, and I have no idea how I'm going to do it. So this video is about playing with rust colored patinas. Um, if this was steel, I could get it in a second. I'd just put some acid on it and it would turn rusty. But this is bronze. It has no ferric element in it. It does not rust. At least, it'll, you know, it'll, it'll tarnish, but it won't rust red. So I'm going to play around and see if I can't get a red color. It's a little outside the box for me, but um, he likes different, so we're going to try to make him happy. So this is pretty much our chemical repertoire for getting our patinas that we struggle with, but we usually can get decent patinas. Um, Birchwood Casey M20 is a, basically a gun bluing, you know, for turning uh, gun rifles dark and keeping them from uh, rusting. So we use this mixed 50-50 with water and put it on cold and it'll turn the bronze really dark and then we usually buff most of that off just to get some um, dark highlights to give the, some of the colors to stand out better. Potash sulfurated, uh, liver, also known as liver of sulfur, mixed with water, spray it on cold, it will also turn the bronze dark and then it's more of a gray color than the, um, the M20. But usually, most patinas, you start off with a dark background and steel wool them back and then put a color on it. And our two colors consist of cupric nitrate mixed with water. And this gives us our greens. Like the little Santa Claus has some green highlights, but you'll notice it's over a dark background. And this little holy family it's got some green highlights, but it's also over a dark background, but the background's not quite as dark, so um, you get a hundred different uh, shades just using the same chemicals with different concentrations and different heats and all that kind of little bitty differences make a big difference. Um, and then our other color is the ferric nitrate, which we mix with water and either spray or brush on, and it gives us the the reds, the reddish browns, the, you know, the kind of traditional colors that you usually see on a piece of uh, bronze art. Um, this one has a darker background. This one has less of a dark background. So the uh, color of the bronze shows through more. But none of this is what Dimitri wants. He wants red, orange, red, rusty red. So I'm going to play today and see what I can do. Okay, I'm going to start off like we typically do. Um, this is the back of a step plate. And it's not finished, but I did blast it from the blasting cabinet. So I'm going to darken it up with some uh, M20. Just going to spray it on there. I didn't wipe it down with acetone, so it looks like it has a fingerprint down here. But it turns dark almost instantly. <clears throat> I'm going to go rinse it off in the sink. I'm going to dry it off now with some heat. Not going to get it crazy hot, just enough for it to dry off. And I'm going to buff it out with some steel wool. end up with a nice silvery gray. Now I didn't want to show you the color. I wanted to show you what happens after you wipe with steel wool. You can see those little bitty sparks coming off. 
those are little pieces of the steel wool. Those are pieces of steel. And if I were to put acid on them, they would definitely turn on. The problem is they're just sitting on the surface. They're not embedded in the surface. So I think I have a plan to embed pieces of steel into the surface and then we'll put some acid on it and see if we can't get an orange color. Now I use a grinder pretty much every day. Um, typically the four and a half inch grinder which spins at 12,000 RPM pretty fast. Sometimes I use the nine inch grinder which turn, turns at 8,500 RPMs. Um, Whenever you're using a grinder on steel, it leaves a shower of sparks. The sparks are going everywhere. And what these sparks are is little red-hot glowing pieces of steel. And typically they fall to the ground or bounce off your clothes and uh, just end up on the floor where I sweep them up. However, if you get real close to them, they're kind of hot. And I know, unfortunately, that if you get close to a car and you're grinding, these little pieces of hot metal will stick into the paint and cause major headaches um, when you're trying to remedy that. Now, I also know from experience that even though the little one spins faster, the big one with its bigger diameter, the outside edges of the grinder is going faster and it throws off more heat. And I know that because several times it has caught my sweatshirt on fire while I was grinding. And the little one's never done that. So what I'm going to do I have a piece of tool steel there, which is high carbon steel. I'm going to grind it and I'm getting real close to the bronze and I can, I'm going to see if I can't embed some of those metal particles into the back of that bronze and then see if I can't um, get them to rust, make a rust color. The trick is getting some particles that will stay on the bronze and not wash off. What I just did, it left a heavy film of um, steel particles. Unfortunately, most of them brushed off with a wire brush. But this is some muriatic acid dilute. Let's see what happens. Let's see what we can do with some heat. Well, nothing much really happened. Um, got some little orange spots. That looks more like um, the copper than uh, steel. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to spray it with uh, lacquer and then see if this won't make the steel particles stick a little better. And then I'm going to make my acid solution a little stronger. I'll try again. So that did pretty much nothing. I'm going to put some, uh, I'm going to grind again and try the ferric nitrate, see if that does anything different. Well, I got it. I got it, and Dimitri's happy. And it did not involve the iron filings from the grinder. It involved some very, very strong uh, ferric nitrate. I mixed a batch of very strong um, ferric nitrate, and I've added some potassium dichromate. And I don't really know what this is, but, it, but I've had it for years and years. And I put it on there really hot, and it came out pretty close to what Dimitri wanted, and then I had some green accents with some uh, strong Cooper nitrate. And it looks like it would rub off, but it doesn't. I can't wax it. Wax it turns it black. But it's a piece for indoors, so it doesn't need to be protected. So uh, we're going to do his sculpture and see if we can't match this again. So I put the little man in the blast cabinet and cleaned him up one more time. To make sure there was no like fingerprints on it. I got him pretty hot already. Sort of 
stop and work my way down. Now that he's all reddish brown, I'm going to squirt him with the muriatic acid. And this acid is turning to bronze, a silvery color that I've never seen before. It's pretty cool. So I guess the difference between me and a real patineur is like the guy who does plumbing on his own house, but he's not a plumber, or the guy who does electrical repairs on his own house, but he's not an electrician. Um, I can make bronze change colors. It's not a waste of color I want. Maybe I can't reproduce it, but I can get a patina on a piece of bronze. But I am not a patineur. And I'm not trying to uh, sell myself as a patineur. I'm just messing around having a good time. So uh, you can maybe learn something from this or maybe not, but that's okay. Either way. I'm putting the ferric nitrate mixture back on. This time it's a little less monocolor. Whatever you call it. It's a little more model. I don't know if I'm liking that or not. So I finished with the second coat of ferric nitrate. And now I'm going to go with the cupric, cupric nitrate. You can see I wipe it with a little steel wool. You can see the little specks coming off. I'm going to go with the cupric nitrate to put a little bit of green on it. The cupric likes a lot of heat. It likes to sizzle. For it to work right. See the little green ring around the perimeter of every time I make a circle. Every time there's a drop on the surface and it burns off, leaves a little ring. See now I made a mistake. The steel wool I used had a little bit of wax on it. Probably shouldn't have used it. Some of the areas are uh, not one to take. And now my squirter is not one to squirt. So we got them all greened up, but I want them a little darker red. So I'm going over the top of it with a little um, hair. My torch went out.
Well, let's let it cool off and see what it looks like. So I ended up jumping back and forth between the cupric nitrate and the ferric nitrate uh, several times. And when I got home, I was trying to find some sort of decent light to take this little video. And the only thing where I could really, really show him up is uh, next to my bed. And it's an LED light. It makes the color look a little different. It's really a little more red than this. Um, the sculptor lady loved it. And the customer loved it. So can't go wrong with that. Even though it's not identical to the reddish orange I was after, it's still... Um, it's a cool patina and it's different than anything I've ever done and that washing the initial layer off with acid I'm, that's something different for me I'm gonna keep pursuing that and one day I'm gonna splatter some iron filings and get that to stick thanks for watching